Hi, Jan. Hi, Francesco. Thanks for joining me again. Yeah, nice to be here. So last time we realized that we had um, five or six podcast meetings, uh, but uh, perhaps the most obvious one, the elephant in the room, at least that was my feeling, was never discussed as such, implicitly, maybe. So mm -hmm. um, the idea today is to discuss just that, which is what do we have in common? And uh, we realize that we follow a lot of uh, similar people on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are directly involved with the self-development groups, which you and I have been uh, part of um, yeah. for the last six months, which is how you and I became quite close, quite intimately sort of um, in touch with one another, sharing things in these groups. Uh, yeah, so maybe over to you with uh, where you at uh, with approaching this chat. Mm. Yeah, mm, that's a good, uh, good question. Um... We haven't like prepared anything, so I guess we will have to see how this will unfold. For... Mm. But um, yeah, I've been following, as you said, we have uh, b become friends uh, uh, through this self-development groups and mm. sharing uh, and doing circling or your style that's more uh or is circling encounter groups and thank you uh so many names out there now so encounter groups and and here and now groups uh, and yeah. that's more similar to circling i guess mm. Mm. um yeah, I'm, I'm not sure where to start, but um, I, as you said, we have uh, some things in common, and the elephant in the room, I guess, it's uh, who we are inspired by and who we, yeah, and uh, like John Verveke with uh, with his seri series. Mm -hmm. Awakening mm -hmm. from the meaning crisis and and Guy Sangstock, whose channel is called what is it called again? Circling, circling with Guy, Cir circling Cir with dialogos, Cir yeah. circling and dialogos with Guy, yes, yeah. And uh, they keep bringing at least now after the new year, they have been doing a lot of things. Uh, and Verveke has uh, released this new series after so Socrates. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, kind of a... He's doing some teaching first. And maybe... Yeah, and also is showing the ecology of practices that has uh, he has developed. Yes, yes. I feel like I, um, you bring to, you bring alive that interest, the sheer interest we have for the subject. Uh, yeah. So I feel like this chat is potentially uh, diving in into what do these people teach? Mm. What is their content? Uh, I know that you're very excited about his last series, Verveke's last series uh, after Socrates. His previous one, or his first one, which made him famous, I guess, is Awakening from the Meaning Crisis. Um, um, and I want to add the second thing to the table uh, on top of 
what do they teach uh, that attracts mm -hmm. us is the what made it possible uh, on a societal level that we discover these people and through following these people we discovered one another because you and I got to know each other through being uh, attendees of a workshop organized by these two guys that we've just mentioned, Verbeke and Sang Stock. Um, and I feel like it's Jordan Peterson. How can, how can one not mention him? Uh, he may no longer be the number one person that we are following, but uh, mm. um, a lot of men followed Peterson on YouTube. He's very much a YouTube phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, YouTube made it very famous. Is one of the biggest name, if not the biggest name, on YouTube. Not necessarily on other platform, but on YouTube, which is mostly male oriented platform. <laughs> uh, only because there are most of the people with an account seem to be young male or middle aged male. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I was certainly attracted by Jordan and. Uh, and for a period of three years, I've been re seriously reconsidering, uh, reconverting back to Christianity. I was brought up Catholic. Mm. Um, only now I'm, uh, I'm starting to be a, be open to the integral scene. Mm. Uh, uh, but then again, I still feel that Jordan Peterson has been an amazing phenomenon, and without him, Berbeke and Sangstock, we, I'm not sure if you and I would have got to know them, because they sort of follow Peterson's wave. Uh, I, to, to be honest, I, I, I'm I, not very familiar with the Peterson. I, I know, like, the phenomenon. I, I read the, one of his books, I think, but I'm not very familiar of uh, where he he is at now, I find I think something about uh, <clears throat> is I, I I guess I perceive him in a very like uh, some sometimes for me at least uh, a, a bit too technical in a way, mm -hmm. and uh, it's hard to follow some of it, but. Uh, but in the cultural context, as you were saying, I, I, I guess uh, there's a lot of. It, it, maybe he's like a pioneer, like uh, mm. opened the possibilities and showed the, the world how to, yeah, orient uh, people and. I find, I see him as a kind of the rock star, maybe <laughs> like a rock star. But uh, yeah, um, I realize that uh, I I feel drawn starting this discussion with Peterson because uh, I feel like feminism was very much needed uh when it happened in the 60s and 70s and it's still needed today whichever new version would be the most apt and wokeism um, as much as feminism and marxism um yeah. post is one of the yeah and postmodernism is all all these Mm. left wing for the lack of a better umbrella name were needed and have been needed mm. some virtues are better than others yeah. um, but at some point on the mainstream political you get Trump opposing wokeism mm. uh, this type of uh, yes well wokeism I'm going to use wokeism as the latest reflection of postmodernism, feminism, and, mm. uh, and Marxism. I know it's not very what super accurate. Uh, walk, the walk, the walk movement, I'm going to use it uh, W O K E. 
W. I, I'm not familiar with this uh, term. You are familiar. I'm just not pronouncing it pronouncing it well. Uh, I, we we must have discussed this hundreds of times. W O K E. Woke. Woke. I, I'm really not. What's it? Uh, what's the? What is it about? Because I, I can't re recall this. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think in a few minutes you might say. Oh, oh. Walk. yeah, walk. Ah, of course, awake and walk. Yeah, <laughs> it's morning for you, so yeah. fair enough. <laughs> I'm not. Um, I'm not awake yet. So walk is like what? What? <laughs> Yeah. Whatever was been going on in university campuses and uh, um, with people uh, taking a stand yeah. uh, against, you know, white, where male dominance, uh, yeah. uh, racism, uh, anti-feminism, patriarchy, uh, yeah. all the oppressors, whatever is there to to defend the minorities' rights. Yeah. Um, yeah the 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 conscious movement i guess the conscious movement and it's uh, often uh, compared to uh some sort of a feminine um, uh, not as in women but as in a feminine um, source of if i feel this way mm. I ask you to respect yeah. my feeling. If I feel like a woman, I feel you should respect my attempt to become a woman. Yeah. Or the, if you feel the... you are oppressing me, then you should reckon with my belief that you are oppressing me. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of uh, things happening, I guess, and and that's also underneath that everything everything you mentioned is is on um, at stake, I guess, in a way, or has been for for many years, and the value or values is is changing uh to be more yeah. yeah it's uh the value system have uh is um is underneath everything i think i think uh and it's moving and uh, it's a uh, it's a lot of i i think that's what they have in common Jordan Peterson, John Rebecca, and Guy Sengstock, they're, they're seeing this broader picture and they're trying to employ and inform different kind of modalities that can uh, that can uh, help us, I guess, to to get, get out of stuckness and to realize what's going on and the, the true psychotechnology that's often referred to and 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 to try to try to like lower the frequency of uh, of um conflicts both in our inner lives and also interpersonally that's kind of what they're trying to uh, do and more and more people are drawn drawn into that because they can see the see the same thing and uh, the oppression as you said is starting like if if I feel oppressed or I have a lot of inner conflicts, I, I think this was mentioned in uh, the fourth, fourteenth, teen and fifteenth uh, episode in the awakening from the meaning crisis. Yeah, 
Mm -hmm. uh, where he's talking about how inner conflict makes us more egocentric and how how this uh, makes it almost impossible to to have a well well functioning uh, re relationships with the others and with the world i guess so yes um i, I think that's uh i i notice i i want to try to get to the yes i realize that uh, you are you are drawn to a different direction than me at the moment and so let's see um uh, yes. yeah, can you, Are you well, so what so right so um tell me where you would like to get uh, and then i just uh summarize and end up with peterson so that we can move on to sangstock and verveiki um I just want to sort of complete the yeah. historical society. So... Yeah, that's a good. Story. Please continue with that. Yes, because I feel uh, that I feel like uh, I feel very grateful to Peterson, and I feel like Sangstock and Verveki, uh without him, uh, they they haven't got the charisma that he has. And they. Um, and they talk naturally to a somewhat, uh, I don't want to say elite, because that's a bit unfair, but, um, you know, Vivek is quite academic and Sengstock uh, is less academic. Uh, but there is a specific route. Uh, people that are into therapy and talk, talking therapies, they, they come across circling or encounter groups or they've been on a journey with their therapy, so they've been on a journey with yoga. And But um, I think with Peterson, he's uh, like Trump, but in a different way. Uh, um, he's, he's given a voice to um, the Western white males that uh, sort of uh, suffer the 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 political correctness and feminism and uh, got, mm. got lost. And uh, we know that 95% of the breakups between men and women are initiated by women and and men don't seem to be good enough partners and don't seem to know what to provide to women in these yeah. relationships. So Peterson said, um, in universities, uh, I stand up against this dominance of political correctness. I'm mm. going to speak my mind. Um, you know, and Trump did something similar. Uh, in, I, I obviously look up to Peterson much more than Trump, but uh, Peterson empowered people with understanding historically, psychologically, culturally, philosophically, yeah. why that makes sense. Yeah, uh, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's fair, maybe, to say that uh, uh, how to be a man in our current society is more and more uh, problematic uh, for our generation than it was for for our parents' generation, and uh, the and. Yeah, I think that's w what he brought to the table, Peterson. That is kind of a directive how to engage more and speak or your your mind and stuff. Uh, that's that makes it uh, clearer, clearer how to step up, I guess, and show up. Uh, in our current society it's a a lot of uh, and me included confused men uh, out out there in our current society 
I, I notice I hesitate to kind of step into that. Uh, I, I don't feel very. I don't know. Yeah. It's. Uh, I, I, I don't want to speak for the whole, but yeah, I guess Peterson brought a lot of uh, clarity around that uh, topic. And he made it mainstream. Yeah, that's that's my point about. Uh, and because he made it mainstream, uh, even channels, YouTube channels of John Berbeke and Guy Sangstock, really mm. benefited from his explosion because uh, mm. partly to the YouTube algorithm, which realizes that followers of Peterson have something in common with the followers of, uh, they started to sort of advertise uh, these guys' mm. channels, and it's been wonderful because there's so many uh influential thinkers that have been following uh, particularly mm -hmm. the pandemic with all of us who are on youtube and uh, yeah and online uh mm -hmm. and i peterson exploded the two or three years before the pandemic so that was the first explosion of men looking for meaning online and then the pandemic that was a second explosion and and also all of these channels blossomed because we mm. need to remember that a lot of people also could become full-time earners on YouTube because their channels yeah. started to grow. And that may, I think that makes a lot of difference because it's, uh, all of a sudden you have a dedicated class of... Mm. Well, most of these guys are men um, yeah. that are being very influential people culturally and a lot of these guys engage with dialoguers. They would meet another person just like you and I meet today. Yeah. Um, and I've been learning so much from people discussing on a one-to-one -one basis. Mm. Yeah. They, they, they bring a lot of uh, knowledge that uh, wasn't available that's that's kind of the explosion i think uh, like how available that level of knowledge uh, has become in in this quite it's almost like it's so new and it's kind of where to go for for real knowledge and how to do like in development psychology mm -hmm. for ecog uh, ecog science cognitive mm -hmm. science and like uh it's so much philosophy mm -hmm. they, they bring and this is i i think this is to and they're very explicit on like we need to make philosophy what it was mm -hmm. uh, from ancient time it, it was a practice mm -hmm. a way of being mm -hmm. and and they're making that link to how we uh, how we are as humans mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. we're always trying to figure out and to manage our lives in the best way, and to that's so that's so close to philosophy. What how it's practiced and and uh, mm -hmm. and this fellowship. Uh, but the, my point was initially, <laughs> at least, it, it was uh, like how available knowledge real knowledge is is tremendous and is really valuable yes it sounds like uh you consider real knowledge these dialogues i do uh is that what you're saying you also do mm. yeah yeah dialogues and it's uh like i, I think that's so crucial i guess if we see the meta perspective and how the climates are we're kind of destroying ourselves and to realize and to play a part to be a part of the opposite 
uh, and to realize that we, we need this earth and how the logos and different practices can can get us away from self-deception to realize that we we are crucial for a healthy and wholesome development if mm -hmm. we, i guess if i take good care of myself and others that care that care that careness that good care uh, and understanding and knowledge is all, all intertwined so i can see that like okay we need the trees <laughs> so we don't suffocate ourselves and i i think the they speaking to care and to mm -hmm. virtues the virt virtues that we're kind of lost in our consumerism that everything can be kind of replaced and they're trying to kind of point to a more wholesome development and right. that's a huge subject and it's so complex but yeah yeah, it's it's fascinating. You know, I, um, I feel like uh, I'm almost in sync with you. I think we're getting there. Mm -hmm. um, 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 I mean, I'm always in sync with you, generally speaking, but in this dialogue in particular, mm -hmm. um, I feel some sort of a pride in humanity. Uh, <laughs> there's so much mess. You remind me of so much problems that we need to sort of look after the the uh, uh, the environment. We haven't even mentioned the, the potential nuclear war mm. disasters. Uh, but I I sort of talked about the uh, historical difficulties between men and women, and I just want to say that uh, I'm no anti-feminism at all. I feel like feminism is necessary, and uh, um. And even though Peterson had this following of men, he's also reached out to lots of women and had good advice for them. And I now follow uh, two or three sort of uh, YouTube channels of we, you know, women feminism, feminist. Uh, uh, and I feel like um, yeah, gradually men and women uh, started to find ways to agree on a trajectory of, uh, you know, being in harmony again in the West. Uh, um, so I look forward to that. And so the pride in humanity that I feel is like, you know, after slavery and, uh, you know, the great masters of anti-racist Martin Luther King and, uh, you know, these people. And uh, we, we've come so far and it may have taken a bit of an extreme turn with uh, some version of postmodernism, and Marxism and, you know, and wokeism. But uh, um, I, I, I seem to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I think these people that we are celebrating today, are the, they are sort of leading the way in bringing back the harmony with the environment, between genders, between classes, between races. Yeah, and I feel like, and I'm gonna shut up after this. That uh, for me it was very important. I was never a big reader. Uh, uh, my concentration with dialogues on YouTube with audio has um, made a lot of sense. But I, I, I know that you are more well read than me. But it's not just in terms of. I, me finding dialogues more gripping than books, but it's also these people, to see them talking gives me uh, a sense of belonging, a sense of, oh, here's another man, or here's another human being, or here's another Westerner. Or, mm. You know, all these degrees of things in common that I have with these guys or, or women or uh, uh, yeah. which 
speaks to me. We yeah. are, you know, both experiencing the meaning crisis and and looking forward to a way to overcome them. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, like you said, I, I like that you put it like that's what we're, I guess, uh, what we're doing. We're trying to celebrate uh, and... And I, I also resonate with with listening to them is I feel like I'm this medium is unique in that way. Like yeah. it, it, I I listened to um, what was it the other day it was something guy put out. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, his his reading A. H. Almas, uh, a book by him that's called the the Pearl Beyond. Mm -hmm. But my point is like I I've been following. It. I think he's put out like nine episodes or something, reading mm -hmm. and riffing and like, and it's so. It's it's so touching on what we're talking about and the meaning crisis and how how this um how this can touch touch me in a deep profound way and made make me realize that duality of the two worlds like them but <laughs> yeah uh, my point is, I, I guess mm -hmm. it's very easy to follow. Uh, it's very accessible, and it's very. It's not easy. You have to pay really close attention to 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 what he's saying. But it's so meaningful to listen to, and how how this philosophy and thinking and like how that can percolate down into my system that's not it, it can happen with books also but it, it's this sense of aliveness that this this medium brings i think that's what we need so because it's not only propositional to to use John Verbeck's terms like mm -hmm. you have to move from the propositional and it's very we have become so familiar to read books uh, in order to retain information and propositions but this medium right now is affording us so much more aliveness and we can speak with our hands and <laughs> we can nod them like mm -hmm. it's totally different. And I think that's what just what we need. We need this authenticity so we can be touched and be moved by listening and talking and dialoguing and and practicing mindfulness and everything. It's we have to it's so we have to become what we're what we're we can't read ourselves into wisdom we have to become wiser i can say a lot of like clever things and but we have to become wiser instead of like oh i'm very wise and i I have read all these books and so I have a ton of propositions and I'm going to crush you. Uh, I'm like, I'm going to dominate you with all my propositions. And that's not, we have been doing that for centuries. Yeah, since the cart, right? Yeah, Maybe. since the cart. And we lost something. Tremendously, we have lost so much value 
in collaborating and in dialoguing, it's, yeah. And that's very, that's deeply disturbing and yeah, that's. Yes. Um... Yes, uh, these people are going about the meaning crisis. Uh, um, I suppose Peterson is particularly addressing political correctness uh, on a mainstream level. Uh, uh, yeah, they're all doing it from different, from their different uh, viewpoints. Uh, Berbeki from cognitive science and uh, and philosophy. Yeah. Uh, guy from philosophy and talking therapies uh yeah peterson from the uh, mainstream political religious psychological societal mm. also i think like they have different um, but, but but they're also very aware of yeah. what's needed in my perspective like mm -hmm. there, there's so much converging and like guy was he helping um Rebecca with with uh, discovering circling that's mm -hmm. that's mentioned in the, like the first episode of after socrates yeah, uh, that the value of practicing authentic relating mm -hmm. uh, and all these modalities we have mentioned is this is where we can train and practice so it doesn't become this uh, propositional knowing stuff. Yes. Yes, the propositional is like uh, together with political correctness. I, I you know, I, I felt so oppressed for so many years by that. And part mm -hmm. of that is my responsibility not to see a way out. About part of it, I feel like uh, a, a lot of people, we've been resonating and we've been feeling on with each other. We've been feeling on the same boat. It's like I mean, Facebook is possibly the the or newspapers headlines are possibly the best examples for this. I mean, on Facebook, you could be accused or blamed for being uh, an oppressor or I don't know, a chauvinist or mm. white supremacist, or you know, you can be scapegoated very easily, whether you deserve it or not, because things become very black or white. Okay, so if you said this. It goes back to the propositional. There's nothing in between. Is that yeah. you are scientifically correct or I disprove mm. your, your thesis? Yeah. Um, and of course, I mean, with COVID, this, the fact that we were all so slaves of the propositional, that meant, okay, if the COVID science says so, who are you? If yeah. You are a, conspiracy theories so a lot of you know the cancel culture uh whether you were cancelled on medical grounds or because you were being racist or because you were being uh, uh mm. chauvinist uh, or you know yeah. um yeah the propositional and political correctness uh yeah, yeah things are not black and white they are not scientific there's so many shades of gray yeah. between yeah it's uh it's um, almost like walking out on the minefield and hoping that I put words together so uh, let's see if, let's see if this will explode and and that's also I guess what what uh, a lot of people who are oppressors are using they're talking to in a way that uh, they're they're kind of you mentioned Trump earlier. He, he's a great rhetorical mm -hmm. bomb maker. Like mm -hmm. he can say one thing and 
everybody who is suppressed is stirred up and and uh, and gets excited or, or gets uh, furious because uh, yeah he's appealing to their furiousness right yeah and uh, he's brilliant in uh, that way uh, but that's not what we need i guess he, he's making wars uh, oh right right yeah, yeah i mentioned tempt because it's symptomatic of the era where we live where everything is so bipolar. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I guess it goes back to the problem of the, like uh, what's been called uh, the tyranny of the proposals in a way. I don't think that's correct. But... Of the propositional, the tyranny of the propositional. Yeah. I feel like that. Yeah. Uh... The tyranny of the propositional. <laughs> yeah and we need pro propositions but the level of it is so high that and the, the adversity that comes along as you we're kind of speaking to diversity and domination and if you if you don't know this proposition i can like i can make you look stupid and all that shit mm -hmm. so so to to participate in the dialogue like we're doing now and with others who mm -hmm. we're having groups with and we we have to that's what we have to do more of so we can mm -hmm. connect and and experience this felt sense of fellowship and connection because mm -hmm. it's so easy to get caught up in the propositions and it becomes like this uh, separation and I know from like talking with people who I'm sometimes I try to communicate what what I'm doing like I'm I'm dialoguing and I'm practicing and people mm -hmm. me like well, like kind of big question mark but my point is that it's so competitive if we bring a lot of propositions to the table and we're trying to understand each other it can be like this this power struggle and competition in order to know i know a proposition that's going to take your proposition and i'm going to stab you with another proposition that's kind of sharper and like i i remember this guy i uh I tried to talk to him. I tried to relate and like communicate. And he was, he was so, it was like everything I said, it was like this, he came out with uh, 10 propositions and analyzing and turning it around. And like, I was, I was looking at him and I, of course I was overwhelmed, but I was I was kind of what's going on here? And I was thinking as he explained a whole lot, like um so many complicated things. And but he wasn't he wasn't here. So I felt like I was talking to a machine that fed me a lot of information, but I guess I'm I'm speaking to to the sense of presence here. Like he wasn't present. So I couldn't connect with him. And it was horrible to, to try to, but I was, okay, he's gonna go on. And I leaned back and I was like, ask, questioning myself, like what's going, what's really going on here? Because he was a smart guy and very charming and very like uh, competent 
had a lot of words and but no almost no sense of presence and i think i'm saying this to to just make a a contrast and what like at least in my world that's that's two completely different things to to build uh, trust and safety and um yeah relationships right right and I, and i feel like this guy uh presence uh was obviously affected by his belief in the propositional and and you know and i feel like there are many people like him uh yeah. out there so um yeah so it's so mainstream that's why i feel peterson has been so necessary mm. uh to fight the the mm. mainstream political correctness uh slash <laughs> propositional because so many because the institutions mainstream institutions are so dominated by political correctness and the proposition of that then these people like this guy mm. i feel for them or i feel for me yeah. as fun because when we are in those institutions and if you are a politician you're very much in that in in that environment if you are in academia yeah. and if you are a journalist yeah. For instance, these professions and they're very well paid profession. And so when you are paid by your employer who <laughs> they expect you to to be a cog in yeah. the wheel. You not you can't really be a, a rebel in that environment. And also I, I want to mention because you said uh, I also feel for for people who are that competent he was a young guy he was probably i think he was around 30 or something mm -hmm. maybe a little younger late uh, 20s but and and i at some point i think it was me or my my closest friend who who's trying to like get to know him and suddenly he he had a couple of drinks, I think, uh, and suddenly he said, like he admitted, like I'm, I'm going crazy because I don't, I can't feel, like he, he, outright, like disclosed how horrible his world were in all these propositions, and he said, like. Sometimes I sit in the room. He he his words this like he said to, this to us. He 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 disclosed it, disclosed it, and he said sometimes I can sit in a, a room and I can know what people are, people are gonna say because I I'm a so like fast thinker. And what's what's he actually saying when he says that like? He knows all the proposition that people are going to make in whatever the theme they're discussing is. And he can kind of think the, think the propositions fast enough so he have this experience of super, superiority because he can mechanically know what proposition comes next and calculate almost and what kind of the, the, it's I think in that perspective of calculating the propositions and come off as brilliant and clever there's so much in that narcissism that goes on in that can easily happen that can we can fall into this feeling of superiority that can be right. really eg egocentrical right um you seem to be speaking about um how unhealthy he found yeah the experience and you seem to suggest yeah. yes it's not a good place to be. Who can relate? I've been, I've been that guy 
in moments of in, yeah, a, in yeah. stages of my life and i'm yeah. still like you know, you know that part of me may need to you know if they cancel my medical appointment three times i may need to sort of uh, engage in a propositional back and forth yeah um but uh, yeah, uh, if you are stuck in a, uh, what I feel is if particularly if you're stuck in a profession where that uh, um, where you need to so your survival is based on you showing that your proposition are cleverer than the others. Yeah, um, uh, it's hard to escape that mode of thinking, but uh, it's unhealthy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And and also, I guess the other side, the opposite side of, of that realm of propositions are being caught up in the propositional way of knowing. Is the, op the opposite is the wonder of the mystery that like the ex existential and the wondering, that's that's what practicing what we're doing circling like meditation yeah that's where we can get in touch with uh, the existentialness of the wonder of being uh, being a human and that's also the preciousness that's get get that easily can get lost in in the overwhelm the tyranny of the propositions so there it's a big like like Rebecca or it's been coined this term stealing the culture mm -hmm. it's that's what he also is these guys are trying to do they're trying to speak to that wonder they're trying to exemplify the wonder and how to become deeply touched and transformed by stepping into the wonder and the unknown so we can get away from the th this two poles is really Yes, yes. Two yeah. different worlds and it's two different paths of developing. Yes. Uh I mean on a say in a safe environment, I can much more easily step up into that place of wonder because I know that you and other group members that I already met, uh Mm. Um, would not attack me or would not mm. try to disprove me or would not judge me uh, yeah. although we are really practicing authenticity so that you may well challenge me yeah. uh, um, so there is always a little bit of us I suppose risk taking which is part of life but uh, again the importance of Peterson to act on a mainstream level is that then we can do that on an everyday in our everyday life we can mm. we don't have to constantly be worried oh if i don't stand my ground this mm. person may say that i'm being an oppressor or that i'm being rude or whatever mm. it's very important to change it on a mainstream level but also to engage in this ecology of practices where we are really mm. <laughs> training ourselves to to practice the stepping into the world. Uh, uh, so I think the political and societal, as well as the ecology of practices, they are both needed. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that uh, perspective. And it's um, and another thing that shows, showed up for me right now is um, is is uh, because of this what's called the uh, the mindfulness revolution that's so many are practicing mindfulness and meditation and stuff mm -hmm. 
there's so many people who who are bypassing spiritual bypassing and also that that needs this understanding this knowledge also to balance balance uh, it out so because it's easy to become this like un um like to not be in touch with the uh, with the whole spectrum of feelings and become very like um uh, oppressive to towards people who are not practicing meditation and it can become like um attitude of like arrogance in that spiritual realm realm also and that's also what they're they're speaking to and i it's um it's easy to become a person like that if you're doing all these practices without having the communal the the correct the correctiveness of being in a group like to practice with each other is also an important way of correcting behavior and perspective and um all this uh, right uh, yes yes a sort of a bottom up uh, yeah I suppose uh, the the mainstream Peterson one, well, that's a bottom up as well. But uh, this is uh, if all of us uh, become more mindful, then if I'm going shopping, my helping and my having an aura of uh, <laughs> um, I'm not sure uh, <laughs> groundedness and benevolence will mm. inspire other people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think it's they're also speaking about that, and I I know that from my own path. Uh, also, at at one point, I I felt like I, I wasn't grounded at, at all. Like I was doing too much of these practices without having any frameworks and stuff, and I because you get so much more and more sensitized if you do a lot of these practices but what do you mean by sensitized sensitized uh, your senses uh, is kind of you're developing also your senses your uh, your concrete senses and you feel feel uh, subtleties more and more but if you're not grounded that's my point if you're if you're not grounded and stable you can become to almost allergic to other other beings like oh you're you're always reactive or i i noticed i i remember i started to judge people because they were, weren't like sensitive enough or something something like that right 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 so i, I think that it's I'm, I'm just saying that that's also something to consider what they're bringing to the table is an understanding of the balance in doing these practices and also frameworks the cognition has to match uh the body the mind and body connection has to be aligned so we can not become this um judging others because they don't are not into uh, these kind of practices because most of people are not into this what what we're doing you know so it's it's just something to be aware of i think at least it's been important on my in my development to recognize that people are most people are are not interested either yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I definitely relate to that. Uh, when we change, uh, and particularly if we feel we are changing in the right direction, or we are understanding through mentorship of these people that we follow, however we do that, uh, yeah. it's, it, the temptation to feel superior and judge is there. Yeah. Uh, I remember in my own life, uh, I moved to from Italy to the UK, and then I, you know, I thought I I knew more than other Italians who didn't. Or when I studied counseling and psychology, I thought I knew more, and uh, mm. and so on and so forth. And when I realized about political correctness and how. Uh, unhealthy and uh, mm. very unhealthy can be then uh, and I, I think wokeism uh, uh, political correctness is exactly this is that uh, there is some sense of uh, it, it could lead to people feeling okay now I belong to the, the righteous people and uh, it's full of uh, wicked people out there. Yeah. The notion of, um, yeah, very... Separate. Very polarized, right? Yeah. A, you can either be wicked or mm -hmm. good. A and if you're good, you probably, you might be a victim. It's almost mm -hmm. like... Um, yeah. This victim status is... Um, seems to be the other side of the oppressor. So if there's an oppressor, there's a victim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's such, it's a, it's a path. It's such a path. It's an, we engage in a path of self-development and uh, the rest of the world may have not done yeah. the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, to, to, I, we were talking briefly on uh, on the virtue virtues in uh, what am I trying to say here? I think to cultivate virtues in the development is a part of having the right orientation and the humility mm -hmm. to to be aware of the suffering that's going on like i, I notice i it's um i'm getting a little emotional because mm. not to go into my personal life but I know that suffering, that's the level of suffering without this communal, the, this belonging that you said. And uh, it's so much suffering going on and confusion and division in that mm -hmm. propositional realm. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, there's this this I, I think I'm I'm trying to to say something about the importance of virtues in people and in towards myself, towards people that are not the who are not having this arenas to to develop this safety that you mentioned to to really unburden yourself if that's needed or to to get clear on what's what is mattering in my life there's also so important to to have that um grounding of the importance of different kind of virtues. Yes, yes. Um, some people are stuck in uh, 
dysfunctional families, abusive families, poverty, uh, you name it, addiction, and they really don't get a chance. And uh, we are blessed uh, mm -hmm. to to have been uh, gifted the opportunity to study and uh, yeah. uh, to be simulated enough and, and not <laughs> abused, uh, um, but actually uh, encouraged to flourish. Um, yeah, and uh, sometimes when we are surrounded by wickedness, it's 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 difficult to maintain that groundedness and humility. Yeah, definitely. And compassion. I guess you're talking about comp compassion yeah. for for those that uh, are maybe on a different path than us. Yeah, and uh, that's sometimes like because I. I guess our perception in doing this kind of work too, it becomes clearer and clearer mm -hmm. and also developing more and more empathy and mm -hmm. clearer perception. Mm -hmm. kind of, at least mm -hmm. in my experience is confronting me to mm -hmm. other suffering and also mm -hmm. that compassion is needs to be there so i don't like so i can connect with people and meet people in their suffering and not mm -hmm. and not making them wrong because they're not on the spiritual path or self-development path and not making that wrong because mm -hmm. that's that's uh and that's why why we need the sangha also so we don't deceive ourselves and become full of ourselves and think we're better than others we need this sangha uh, to 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 maintain that deep compassion for for everybody mm -hmm. And I, I I see that I feel like in my experience I see that clear and clear. It's become like huge, very very important uh, to to mm. to realize also to get in touch with my own suffering, like. I can't I can't suppress stuff. Like I, I know the effect of suppressing. Like yeah. I, I I'm there's so much um around this, I think. So um I guess also as you were saying, like we're we're very fortunate to to be able to follow these guys and connect with other people and it's a it's a blessing and a, a, a huge gift that they're giving um yes i feel like we are come naturally coming to a close uh and i feel like i want to ask you what you want to bring to the end of this chat but um what comes up for me towards the end of this chat is uh you and i have been part of uh beautiful online communities uh i'm now in my late 40s and i would like to um in the physical world also have at least for three or four months a, a, a physical place uh, to be with like-minded individuals. And um, so we started with the teachings of people and we are adding the beings engaging in uh, practices uh, practicing the teachings of wise 
<laughs> wise masters within safe communities of like-minded people is positive. We've also recognized that out there, uh, society is still affected by political correctness and um, and fi financial disparities and misunderstandings, polarization. Uh, sometimes we feel compassion for those who are there, out there in the midst <laughs> of the battles <laughs> and the suffering. And sometimes we struggle to have compassion. Um, yeah. Um, um, I'm not sure if you want to add anything to this. <clears throat> I guess I, um, yeah, you said the physical environment, like, and I guess I'm I'm looking forward to that we're finally going to meet in the real life. <laughs> we're actually. Yeah. We, or you you are going to look for a, for a land in Tenerife yes yes and uh so both of you and yourself and myself live in north europe the uk in norway yeah. and uh we would like to uh build a community in Tenerife uh yeah. at least a few months of the year uh yeah. and we are going to meet in person yeah. Uh, this was the reason why they prompted our face-to-face -face meeting. Look forward to it. It's just a few weeks away. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be... Yeah. Who knows how that's going to be. <laughs> Maybe we start with our pro propositions right away. <laughs> no, but it's going to... I'm li really... This is going to be... Uh, I'm sure it's going to be great to to meet and uh, to to look for something that can be a community. Do you have any last comments for the sake of the podcast? Uh, I I just want to say that like um sure, but I, I'm I I'm grateful for this opportunity and your invitation to. To talk, I felt felt like I felt like at times I because I get few opportunities to talk mm -hmm. uh, uh, about this, so I became I, I feel like I've become very passionate and kind of you were going and wanted to try one path and uh, I was not following I was going like this and uh, but um it, it was great and uh, so i'm grateful for for um for this talk yes i in the second part of the dialogue i felt like we were bouncing off each other uh so yeah um so that was uh yeah pleasurable and insightful so mm. I, i'm also grateful um so uh, we bring this to an end in terms of a podcast. And uh, so we'll, I guess it'd be nice to chat about this again. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jan.